Hi. you actually have to um, go Ayan. to the accredited bank that's assigned oh, to your RDO. Pa. No, so if you're like registered in the Hi, province, guys. you have to go back home to the province, okay. or you know you have to take a grab to that particular branch. Na pwede yung bayaran. Tapos yes. normally, if hindi kayo account holder, nato kayo sa bulk na pila ang tagal tagal na ubus isang araw Correct. just for that. So with Taksumo, you can also pay online. Yes. So okay. you don't have to line up anymore. It's very easy. So ngayon we're also live on Facebook. So sa mga uh, maghihintay lang tayo dito sa Facebook kasi sabi ko 6.30, 6.27 pa lang ngayon sa, sa Facebook. Uh, well, ngayon sa buong mundo, <laughs> hindi lang sa Facebook, malamang, ba? So, but we're here live already, so I'll just share this. So, sino ba dito ang registered? Uy, thank you sa halo-halo. Sino ba ang registered sa inyo, guys, dyan nanonood sa Kumu? So, we're both live right now in Kumu and uh, on Facebook. So, um, since mas matagal na kaming naka-live ngayon dito sa Kumu, so we'd like to know, um, sino ba dito ang freelancer sa inyo? So, maybe give us a shout-out. Maybe tell us kung balak nyo ba mag, maging freelancer or balak nyo magtayo ng negosyo ngayong taon na to. So, let us know. So, sa mga so, sa mga viewers natin dyan, um, share naman ng kwento. Ayan, Ayan si Mian. Ako, sabi ni Fitz, ako daw. Ayan, si Fitz. Siyempre, business owner. Business, ang daming ginagawa ni Fitz eh. Fitz, business mogul si Fitz. Parang ang daming ginagawa ni Fitz eh. So, <laughs> parang hindi... Lahat yan, oo. Oh, investor, yes. Mm. Investor yan si Fitz. Pokemon trainer. <laughs> Sino ba nagpo-Pokemon sa inyo? Kami nagpo-Pokemon. Mga addict sa Pokemon. Eh, anong, anong team nga tayo? Sorry. Anong team nga? Red. Valor. 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 Red team. So, yeah. So, we have already four viewers dito sa uh, Facebook. So, in Facebook, I am Mommy Ginger. So, you can add me. You can follow me. And um, I usually, yeah, I'm Valor din siya. Okay. So, we normally give, well, right now, no, this year, we I actually promise to create more content on business and freelancing for you guys. So, today, our topic is... Possibly, siguro we can already start kasi may mga tao na rin nagsumasali sa Facebook. Um, so, the topic is registering your freelance business. Okay, so today, I'm sure there are still also um, solopreneurs, sole proprietorships, uh, mga negosyante dyan na, or mga home-based businesses na nag-start sa hobby that you want to be, uh, parang you want to be legit already this year, kaya gusto niyo na mag-register ng mga negosyo ninyo. For example, pag nagbebenta kayo sa Instagram, or nagbebenta kayo sa Facebook, or nagbibigay kayo ng mga writing services, photography services, videography services, uh, ano pa bang mga uh, services? And other personal <laughs> services. And other personal services. So this um this particular broadcast broadcast or the bus social this particular broadcast is brought to you by Bulldog <laughs> PayPal <laughs> PayPal Philippines. So sa mga hindi pa naka PayPal jan ano mag PayPal na kayo because you can actually with PayPal when you open an account with PayPal you can get funds from. Uh, clients abroad kasi we're talking about freelancing, ba? So, marami sa ating mga kababayang Pilipino at Pilipina na um, tumatanggap ng payments and remittances from uh, from wait lang ah, chinecheck ko kung live live na ba tayo sa Facebook. Apparently sa akin, oo. At may four viewers. Pero uh, wala pa. So, there. So, um, so, yon. So, kung gusto niyo tumanggap ng payments from abroad, mag-open kayo ng PayPal account. Tapos, yung PayPal account na yon, ililink niyo sa bank account. Tapos, yung bank account na yon, uh, you can withdraw basically all of your funds that you get from uh, payments abroad. Yon. So, apparently, bakit ganun? Parang hindi. Ayan! Live na tayo. Ipag ba ba ito? Iba pa. Or yan na yun. Yan na yan. Okay. So, let's start. Yes, you're live na. Thank you, uh, Danny Palma. Daddy ko po yun. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode. Ayan. Oh, we have a question here. Ay, hindi question. Sorry. Sabi ni Sohail Kiani, 
Uh, hi, I was re I was searching about Taksumo, which seems really great. Mm -hmm. Can you tell a little bit about how to register for tax? For 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 the first time, it seems quite complicated. Totally love your work. Okay, perfect. It's very uh, so it's cool. app yeah app that you ask that question, Mr. Sohail Kiani, Mr. Kiani. So, marami, a lot of people ask us no. So, ano ba ang um, first step when you want to register as a, as a freelancer or as a sole proprietorship? Um, so, this particular um, live stream or live session in Facebook, we will tackle lang the things that you need to do as either a freelancer or a sole pro proprietorship. So, wag muna natin pansinin yung magsa-start ng partnership or corporation. Diba? In the Philippines kasi, diba? when you start your own business, you can choose among the different corporate structures that that's available. So you can be either a professional or a non-licensed professional, which is a self-employed individual, or a sole proprietorship, which is also a self-employed individual. Um, you can also start a partnership. You can also start a corporation. And you can start a cooperative, okay? So these are the things that you, um, these are the different kinds of structures that you can choose from. So for this particular live session or live stream in Kumu, live session in Facebook, we will talk about how to start a business, business, freelancing business as a freelancer or as a sole proprietor in the Philippines. Okay, so let's start with, okay, do you want to add anything pala EJ? Sa corporations and ano. So basically, sige, daanan lang natin just to okay. cover. Um, okay. So, if you're a corporation, basically, you know, how you choose, number one is like the level of li uh, liability. So, there are two factors, no? Liability, level of liability, and um, yung requirements and compliance requirements, no? So, in terms of liability, if you open a corporation, a corporation kasi sa mata ng batas, it's, it's, it's a person. Yes. So, essentially, if like that person screws up, that person gets killed or gets, you know, uh, so gets pro, closed. Not a no, no. Ah, corporation. Sorry, yes, you're it's talking. a separate entity. Yes. Um, right. So, basically, your assets are separate from the assets of the corporation. Um, now, a partnership, a solo proprietorship, yeah. and, you know, registering as a self-employed professional, um, the, yun, those are, you know, you have your personal liability in terms of those structures, no? In terms of requirements, the least requirements that you need are if you register as a professional. Meaning, if you register, especially as a non-licensed professional, so a lot of freelancers, you would be a good fit for that as a non-licensed professional. Um, normally, if you're going for, you know, if you're selling goods, then um, a sole prop is normally a better fit for you. Um, and then beyond that, you know, it's a partnership. You're still personally liable, but you're like, you know, a partnership is essentially a pass-through. My income, your partnership, that eventually gets to you as an individual and you still need to file your taxes. So, dumadami yung filings when it comes to uh, partnerships. No, So, the yes. simplest, as I said, is if you register as a freelancer, aka a non-licensed professional. Yes. Yeah. So, marami nga nag ask eh. Like, ano, ah, so professional din pala yung tawag sa amin pagka freelancer ako. But yes, that's true. No, You're, you're, a, prof you're a professional because you practice... Uh, basically a profession diba? you have a skill that you do so that you can give value to your customers so um okay so laging may nag ask ng question between let's say do i choose freelancing versus sole proprietorship normally no if ano bang magandang example um for example if you're a yoga teacher diba a yoga teacher can like uh, do freelancing sa isang studio versus another studio, parang pupunta siya from one studio to the other. So, um, if that's the case and you don't own your own studio, you can be a freelancer. So, you're a freelancer in... Purely yes, purely services kasi siya. So, but if you have your own yoga studio, that's when now you have to register, obviously, as a sole proprietor kasi meron ka ng space, mm. meron ka ng um, admin, or meron ka ng people that you pay uh, meron, basta, diba? Meron ka ng brick and mortar. So, 
uh, shop. So, you need to register as a sole prop. So, yun yung mag isang magandang example. Uh, photographer, ganun din. If you're a photographer ng weddings, you just go to events. Pwedeng service-based lang siya. So, um, pag meron ka ng, let's say, physical studio or like, people or naging agency ka na, no? like a photography agency or a photography studio, physical studio, then you can now register as a sole. Then you should register as a sole proprietor. So there, is it clear yung parang difference between registering as a freelancer versus like a sole prop? Tapos yung licensed professional naman, these are the people who have PRC licenses, no? You Philippine Regulatory Commission licenses. So if you have a PRC license, you are a licensed professional. So yun yung definition ng dito sa Philippines at least, no? Ng, pro, ng licensed professional. Okay. So now, if you want to um, legalize your freelancing career or your profession or even for mga licensed professional natin dyan na nakikinig and for the sole proprietorships, um, Siguro before we go into that, Yes, go ahead. Why would they want to? Yes, okay. Maraming nagtatanong na freelancer ako, um, bakit naman ako kailangan mag-register, di ba? Bakit ako kailangan magbayad ng tax later on? Sakit lang sa ulo yan. Um, there are several reasons why you should register and legalize your business, no? It's because you need supporting documents for things that you want to enjoy and want to have. For example, if you want to have a car, you need to have a car loan, di ba? You need to loan. Unless liquid ka and you can pay like 700,000 upfront or to a million, di ba? Upfront, then you don't need to to have a loan. But if you want to have a loan, a personal loan, a, a car loan, a housing loan, or even to apply for an HMO, you need an ITR, di ba? So ITR is your income tax return. And yung ITR na yan, hindi yan basta-bastang nakukuha. Hindi ka pwedeng pumunta at, ay, gusto ko pong kumuha ng ITR. No, hindi siya ganon. ITR is basically uh, the one of the tax forms that you need to pay. But before you have that, you have to regularly pay your taxes as um, as a business owner, as a professional, di ba? So, ganun siya. And then, um, you also need your ITR if you want to enjoy your money and if you want to travel to Japan, Korea. Yan, maraming fans ng mga K-drama dito sa Kumu. So, we're live streaming kasi both in Kumu and Facebook. So, yan, if gusto niyong pumunta ng Korea, Japan, kung ano visa sa States, kung ano visa sa saan pa ba, UK, lahat ng countries na yan, you need to show them a proof of your income. As an employee, binabayaran niya ng company that we are employed with, right? Sila yung nagpa-file for us. But if you have your own business... Just, just to clarify. Yes, go ahead. As an employee kasi, mm -hmm. you have your... Uh, Certificate of Tax Withheld that they provide you, 2316. Yes. And they also give you, they can give you a Certificate of Employment and, you know, your payslip. Yes, Normally, correct. that's enough documentation na eh. Mm -hmm. Pero if you're self-employed, hindi ka naman pwedeng gumawa ng sarili mong payslip, di ba? Oh. Tapos bibigay mo sa embassy. <laughs> payslip ko to eh, ginawa ko. So, parang <laughs> lokohan. Binabayaro ko yung sarili oh. ko bakit ba? So, ano yung pwede mo ibigay no official? ITR. Yes. Yun yun. So, makikita niyo sa list of requirements lagi ng visa, ng car loan, ng credit card. Kailangan nila ng copy ng ITR ninyo. Yun po yun. Income tax return. Okay, yan. So, definition of term. So, um... So, nasa na ba ako? So, yun. So, you need also to... Well, basically, no, it's our obligation also. When we earn income dito sa Philippines, tulong na rin natin sa Pilipinas yan, di ba? So, if you want to have a better nation, if you want to have uh, good things here in the Philippines, as you know, taxes is used for uh, creating, obviously, like, um, helping in road work, ano pa ba, yung mga schools, public schools, no? all of those things sa projects ng government, sa taxes natin, kinukuha yan. So, contribution na rin natin yun as Filipino sa ating nation, diba? So, so there, so, maraming use talaga, but basically, no, for for freelancers, marami dyan yung gustong i-enjoy yung pera natin as freelancers, pero hindi natin ma-enjoy kasi 
nasa stop tayo dahil wala tayong visa, hindi tayo binibigyan ng, hindi tayo inaapruvahan ng visa, hindi tayo inaapruvahan ng loans, hindi tayo nakakakuha ng HMO, di ba? So, yung mga ganitong bagay, maganda rin na ayusin na natin. Ano pa? Ika nga, hashtag adulting, di ba? Yeah. Hashtag. Speaking of adulting, yes. you'll eventually reach a point, na, for example, you get married and you want to get a home loan. Yes. Yeah, and if oh. you want to get loans, then yun. Ganun din, ITR. You need the proof of yes, income. Yes, yan. So, syempre, gusto natin enjoy yung kinikita natin. Okay, now, that's why you need to register your freelancing business and you need to register your business in general. Um, okay, hi Hans. Thank you for joining us. We're talking about business registration or registering your freelance uh, profession. Okay, next. Um, so, what's the first step? So, the first step is really... To register, okay, muna, as a freelancer ha. So, mamaya na, iba yung requirements kasi for sole proprietorship. Iba yung requirements sa freelancing naman. Um, iba din pag partnership and corp. As I mentioned, I won't talk about um, partnership and corporation today. I'll just talk about freelancing. We'll just talk about freelancing and sole proprietorship. So, for a, freelance, um, for a freelancer, uh, you need to register with a BIR. Yan yung main thing that you need to do. You need to register. When I say register with a BIR, it's not just your TIN number. Pag kumuha po tayo ng TIN number, hindi po yun ibig sabihin na registered na po tayo as a professional. So, ang ibig lang po sabi nun, may TIN number ka lang. Yun lang yun. So, when you have your TIN number, the next step really is to get a certificate of registration. Uulitin ko po. A certificate of registration at the BIR office. Or a Form 2303. A form 2303. Yes, memorize namin yan. Uh, form 2303. So, how do you get this Form 2303? Okay, sorry. Aside from the Form 2303 or Certificate of Registration, you will also be given your 10 booklets, yung OR booklets mo. Obviously, kailangan mo ng official receipt, right? So if you are servicing a client, you need to issue them an official receipt. Um, hindi lang po yung gawa-gawa nating resibo uh, at kunwari nilagyan natin ng logo, hindi po official receipt yun. Kahit na galing sa inyo yun, it's not considered by the Bureau of uh, internal revenue na official receipt, okay? And the other and um and the other thing that you get from them are your books of accounts. Pinapa stamp yun eh, yung manual books of accounts or yung ledgers, yung mga booklets po natin. So um normally hmm. may tip ako. Yes, Bumili na kayo sa National or Office Warehouse yung wow, mga ledgers na yun. <laughs> because they are sold at your RDOs at 10 times the price. Okay? So, so yun yung tip namin. So, bumili so, na po na tayo na ng books of accounts sa National Bookstore, sa Office Warehouse, ano pa bang mga ganon. So, yeah, bumili lang kayo. So, Blessings. <laughs> bumili na kayo at magdala na kayo ng up to four. I think four books. Pero normally, pag freelancer, dalawa, dalawa lang usually. ang binibigay. Pero kung ako sa inyo, magdala na kayo ng apat just in case. Hi, Mitch! Thanks for joining us. And dito sa mga nanonood, 15 viewers sa Facebook natin. Uh, Nag-increase pa siya. Okay, so for freelance, for you to register as a freelancer, you can go to taksumo.com slash business dash registration. Okay. Taksumo.com slash bizreg. B-I-Z R-E-G. R-E-G. Okay. So you can go there and then you can click on, wait lang, nandito ako sa aming site. You can click on applying as a non-licensed professional. Okay. So when you click the button applying as a non-licensed professional, you'll see the different requirements that you need to collate and then you need to submit to your BIR RDO. RDO stands for Revenue District Office. So, RDO again is Revenue District Office. So, what is the BIR RDO? The BIR RDO is the branch of the BIR where your business is located, in the city where your business is located. So, for example, ang gusto nyong business address ninyo ay Quezon City. So, you have to look for your uh, RDO in Quezon City. So that RDO is 039 and 038, I, if I'm not mistaken. Medyo memorize na namin. Pero 039 sure ako. Ayan. Sa my West Ab. Yes, sa my West Ab. So, <laughs> natawa sila. Kila, alam na namin. So, um, all you need to do is collect 
all of these documents. So I will go through the documents one by one. But then again, I will also write the link here. Wait, let me write the link. Ayan. EJ, you can go through the documents na para I will just type this dot com slash this this reg. This uh, is Ayan, this reg. Yeah, mm -hmm. memorize EJ. Ilalagay ko lang sa Facebook. For you guys, Jan, you can also visit us um, in, uh, visit our site, no? So, sa, I'm talking to the people lang dito sa Kumo. Okay. So, now, the, the forms are Form 1901, which is your application form. So, you do that in three copies. You can download. We have a link in our site also for that form. You also have Form 1905. So 1905 is change in your uh, details. So if you're changing details on, let's say, address, you're changing your, ano pa ba yung change change doon? Your stat, your, hindi status eh, your, ano yung 1905? Uh, Business, yung registration Change address. Change information. Oh, any information eh. Marami dun kasi. Marami kang pwedeng palitan dun. So, um, for those of you na dating employed, so this is another frequently asked question sa amin. No? For those of you who are employed before, and iba yung city of where you are, uh, of where you are versus the city of where you were employed, you need to transfer your TIN from that RDO, the city of your employer, to the city of the, your business address. So that's why kailangan ng Form 1905, okay? So yun, so you fill that up first. And then that 1905 form, you submit it to the RDO of the city Can of your something? employer. Yes, go. In case you already have a COR, and let's say you're like registered sa... Uh, like where you originally came from. Let's say you were in Metro Manila and then you moved to Bacolod, for example. So your registration mo nasa Metro Manila. We have customers like that. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them have opted to not change their RDO anymore because Taksumo is location agnostic. Yes. You can file to whatever RDO from wherever you are. Yes. Okay, so yun. Correct. So yun. So hindi naman kailangan, not necessary na, na magpapalit ka kung gagamit ka ng Taksumo. But if you're gonna do it manually, you really have to. Um, so form 0605, which is the payment form, also in tripic triplicate copies. Hi, Alben. Thanks for joining. Um, and then you have to have your occupational tax receipt. Itong OTR na to, you have to go to the municipal hall. Ito lang naman yung only form that you need to uh, that you need to fill out no when you want uh, when you want to apply for um, a freelancing status with the BIR. So all you need to do is get that OTR. Bakit kailangan do personally nyo siya pupuntahan sa munisipyo. Why? Because the municipal hall wants to check ano ba yung klaseng negosyo yung itatayo ninyo, ano ba yung klaseng freelancing career yung ginagawa mo. So, that's how it is. So, you need to get that OTR or again, occupational tax receipt. That's one of the supporting documents. Also, um, you need a clear scan copy of your birth certificate. And then marriage certificate, if applicable. And then may proof of billing. So proof of billing can be, let's say, Globe Bill, Smart Bill, uh, ano pa ba, mga Bills Cable. Uh, basta nakapangalan sa inyo with the address kung saan kayo nakatera or saan kayo, saan yung business address na gusto ninyo. Uh, what else? Three copies of two valid IDs. So, dapat valid IDs, guys. So, at least, sana may government IDs kayo to show. Um, kung sa inyo yung property, title of property, kailangan. Or RPT, actually, minsan pinapayagan nila yan eh. Uh, lease contract, if you're leasing, no? Sa mga nagrenta ng kanilang uh, address, kailangan lang ng lease of contract. You also need a copy of the client contract if you're a freelancer, no? So you need a project contract. So when you say, um, if for example, uh, you're a freelance writer, you need a copy of, let's say, yung writing gigs na pinapagawa sa inyo. So ano yung contract, ah? Kung wala kayong contract, magpagawa na lang kayo sa isang close na client ninyo para at least mas madali 
Uh, barangay clearance. This is also pala required. Sorry, there are two things that you need to get from your LGU as supporting documents. LGU, local government unit or municipal hall. That is your OTR, which is your occupational tax receipt, and your barangay clearance. So, yan yung two things that you need to get. And then, uh, we have a special power of attorney. If papagawa nyo sa amin yung uh, paglalakad ng documents ninyo. And then you have a letter, letter of intent. May copy kami sa site of that letter of intent. And authorization, if again, kami yung gagawa. So, all of these requirements, you collate it. It's at the link that we shared with you guys. So, if you want us to process it for you, all you need to do is collate it and send it to us sa office namin in BGC. So, Taksumo headquarters is in BGC. So, all you need to do is send it to us and then we will process it for you. We'll send you the invoice and then we'll process it for you. Uh, do you have any questions so far regarding registering your freelancing career or your freelance business? Wala pa naman. Wala pa? Wala pa, guys? Ayan, mukhang wala naman sa two platforms. Okay, so now, pagka gusto mo naman mag-register as a sole proprietor, so again, itong sole proprietor, ito yung mga may brick and mortar stores, or pag may ginagawa kayong, uh, pag nang manufacture kayo ng, let's say, cakes, or whatever things na ginagawa nyo talaga, so kailangan ng med na binabenta ninyo, like bags, for example, um, kailangan na siyang sole proprietorship. So basically, pareho lang sa lahat ng mga sinabi kong requirements kanina, but you have to add your DTI certificate, which you can get online through the DTI site. Hi, Bex. Thanks for joining us. And then, what else do I need? Ah, pictures of inside and outside of the business address. So kailangan ninyo ng picture ng kung saan kayo, yung office ninyo, or kung sa bahay kayo, inside and outside of your house or condo, actually. What else? Um, Hindi like, namin alam bakit gusto nila makita. I know. Like ako, Pero parang... Pero requirement. So picture, fine. actually, pinicturean ko lang yung table ko. Ito, yung table ko, kung saan tayo nila live stream. Ito lang yung pinakita ko sa kanila. Uh, what else pa? That's it. So, yun lang yung mga requirements. So, then again, pwede rin namin namin to gawin for you guys. Uh, the processing fee is in our site. We're very transparent naman sa fees. Yung fees pala that you see in our site, that's already inclusive of all of the actual government fees. So, walang hidden charges. Yan na yan. <laughs> so, that's it. So, that's how you register for as a freelancer and as a self-employed, as, as a sole proprietorship. Okay. So, what else do we discuss? So, I guess the next question is, for a lot of you guys, so, after, Ano ba, paano ko malalaman if tapos na? Like, if I've already registered. So, the three things that you need to get if you're a freelancer from the BIR. So, basically, BIR lang yung pag freelancer ka, you register only with the BIR, but you get supporting documents from your LGU. If you're a sole prop, you register with your municipal hall and the BIR. And obviously, DTI. So, tatlo. Hi! Hi, zombie. Thanks for joining us. So, there are three um, entities that you need to register with pag sole prop ka. So, there, um, if you're a freelancer, the things that you need to have is your certificate of registration, your books of accounts, and your official receipt booklets. Okay, yun lang yung tatlong things that you need to have and malalaman mong tapos ka na sa pag-register. If you're a sole proprietor naman, what you need to have is a DTI certificate, a business permit from from the barangay, I sorry, from the LGU Municipal Hall, your barangay certificate kasama yan, tinitingnan din yan. And then um obviously no for it's a sa industry kasi iba-ibang industry will require iba-ibang compliances pa. Parang ibang mga entities who will give you like FDA, yung mga ganon. Pero I won't discuss that na. And with the BIR, your COR, your um, books of accounts, and your official receipt booklets. Hi, Leonardo. Thanks for joining us. Yes, um, any business ko. Any kind of business. So kung 
for example, if you're in the food business, meron pa dyan na kailangan ng mga additional permits pa. So, I'm talking in general. So, if may mga additional permits, thanks, Bex, for the taho. Um, so, pag may kailangan pang additional requirements, sinasabi naman yan sa municipal hall mo. So, for example, gagawa ka ng beauty products, kailangan pa ng additional requirements yan, like if if, di ba? Parang FDA. I'm not too familiar. b yeah. Mm -hmm. Parang ganon. I'm not too familiar with the requirements of each industry, no? But in general, these are the requirements that you get. Okay. So now, what do we do? Once that we have all of these, once we have all of these documents na sinabi ko, to, to tell you that you're already done with business registration, we go to sustaining your business, which is taxation, diba? So you need now to um, deal with all of the taxation stuff. Okay, so EJ, baka you can start it off. Mm. Ayaw ko. Hindi, <laughs> sige. So, um, tax compliance, yan na, nandiyan na yung business mo, may COR ka na. Pag meron ka na, then your, uh, then the BAR starts expecting na dapat nagpa-file ka na. Meaning, if may na-miss kang filing, then open case yun, lagot ka, okay? Mm -hmm. So yun yung medyo trade-off. But um, the thing is, uh, pati mga zero pala kailang i-file yun, ha? some people think na kapag wala silang kita, hindi silang magpa-file. Hindi totoo yun, ha? kapag zero, magpa-file ka na zero, okay? Wala ka lang babayaran. Uh, um, so, okay, so when it comes to taxation, the first thing is, every January, magre-renew ka, okay? Ng iyong registration. So normally you have to get, you know, you have to get a form 0605 and then pay that to the bank. The whole normal filing process, no? Uh, but in Taxumo, it's very easy. Yeah. So you might want to check out Taxumo. We created a process for 0605. You're done in like five minutes, no? It's oh, very easy. As in, sobrang dali lang, guys. Mm -hmm. As in, totoo yun, five minutes or less. Mm -hmm. Papasok ka lang. Like four. Four minutes. Exactly. Four point, four minutes and 30 seconds. Gana. <laughs> Yan. Uh -oh. Okay. So, may mga questions tayo. So, before we proceed, no? Hindi ko nakita, guys. Um, may mga questions pala tayo sa Facebook and sa Kumu. Um, one question of our group. Um, I know that it's difficult and expensive to make business legal. But I read before that it's more difficult and more expensive closing one once it's legal. Question is, when is the best time to make your business legal, especially if you're in two part-time e-commerce and online business? Ay, very good question. Very nice question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ako, I will speak from my personal experience, and I don't know anong insights ni EJ about that, pero ako muna. So, yung insight ko dyan. <laughs> so, what I want to share with you, no? So, when I started Manila Workshops, I was, um, I actually really registered it from the beginning. You know why? Kasi ako yung type of person. I think it's personality based also. So parang ako, gusto ko kasi maayos lahat. Maayos lahat. When I start something, I want everything to be legal. I want everything to be ar arreglado, be, ano mayon, arranged. Uh, parang very organized, no? In terms of lahat, processes, yung admin stuff. So lahat yon I really registered once I started. Pero I guess, no, to be more practical about it, ang view ko rin naman dyan for a few. I think tama yung sinasabi ni Francis dun sa isang group, yung Fran si Francis yung isang friend ko, yung nag-post nitong question dito, na... If you've already validated, if you've tested your business concept, and when I say test, no, you can, maraming kinds of ways of testing it. You can ask your friends kung bibilin ba nila to, or you can sell it to your friends, di ba? So if you've tested the concept and you've proven that people subscribe or pay for the service that you give or the product that you give, then I think it's about time to make things legal, di ba? Kasi... What's there to lose? Business is a risk. Alam naman natin lahat yun eh, di ba? Risky naman talaga magnegosyo eh. And, pero, mas risky later on to find out ang dami mo palang na-miss in terms of like requirements and you're gonna pay the penalty. So, 
ayoko yung ayoko yung feeling lang na kayo din ma-feel nyo na kinakabahan kayo na may nagawa kayong mali or may na-miss kayo or may na- alam mo yung mapipenalize kayo for something, di ba? Pero, then again, at the end of the day, it's up to you. It's your decision. It's your choice. Pero, yun yung aking view of things. Yes. How about you? What's your view of this thing? Ang galing nagbigay akong taho. Ay, thank Anyways, you! Paano ko nagbigay ng taho? Magic. <laughs> so, magic. <laughs> yeah, sige. Ang sa akin is, number one, if you're e-commerce, you have to. So there's like uh, an e-commerce bill that specifically talks about that, that you're mm-hmm. basically a normal business and you have to register. Second, if you're an e-commerce business or an online business, normally you do a lot of marketing online. Yes. Okay? Oh, Which means you're very visible. Okay? Which means that the BAR can easily see you. And yes. anyone can easily report you. If you want to report anyone, just go, just search for BIR rate, as in R-A-T-E. Is there a program called Run After Tax Evaders? And you'll see it's just a form. Uh-huh. And, you know, people report other people on that form. Madali so, if you're guys. very visible, then you're, you know, you're very easy to report. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that was shooed in with the new train regulations, train 2, was a slight relaxation of banking secrecy laws. Okay? Oh. What that means is, they can, you know, the BIR can request for your bank documents without your permission, basically, you no? Know? So, of course, it's much more nuanced than that. I'm like, but I'm like sobrang simplifying it, but that's part of train two. They simplify yeah, that so the BIR can actually get that and can easily audit you. Okay, so I think from a safety point of view, it's safer to do that. Yeah. Like from the get-go, just register it. Um, the other thing that I think is also important is yun na ni Ginger is the mindset. If you're feeling na kasi just in case hindi magfly ikoklo ko, you're leaving yourself an out. Okay, you're giving yourself an excuse. So for me, that's a recipe for failure. Okay, if you're if you're saying na oi sige just in case magfail ako safe ako, sure that may be smart. But like at the back of your mind, that's an excuse for you to say later on na okay lang mag-fail kasi may backup ako. Remove that. Uh-oh. If you remove, it's called burning your boats. Okay, not burn your bridges. Don't burn your bridges. <laughs> burn your boats. So basically, if you burn your boats, then you have no choice but to move forward. Actually, so I recommend yung, that you do that. Yeah. Actually, ganun talaga yung ginawa ko sa sarili ko eh. Parang yung time na nag ako from my job before to start a business. I was pregnant. Tapos wala na. As in, no turning back. Na. So parang inipit ko na lang yung sarili ko. O sige guys, ito na to. All out na ako. Parang nag-decide na lang talaga ako na magiging full-time uh, blogger ako, full-time uh, workshop, itong business ko, ano, yung negosyo kong events management. Full-time na to. Gagawin ko na at papalakihin ko siya. Which I obviously did. Parang ngayon. <laughs> 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 hindi naman. Which I did. Hindi, kasi hindi, totoo lang guys, talaga takot na takot ako nung time na yon As in, parang sabi ko, kaya ko ba to? Buntes ako, manganganak na ako in three months. Kasi sabay sila eh, binuksan ko eh. And then parang sabi ko, wala na akong choice. Parang it's either palakihin ko siya or or wag ko na to gawin at all. Bumalik na lang ako later on to the corporate world. Wag ka na gawin yung buntis. <laughs> Hindi yun. Pigiling ko. Ah, okay. <laughs> but basically, ba? So parang inipit ko yung sarili ko. Wala akong choice. So that's why, ito, pinalaki ko na lang talaga siya to, to what it is right now. So wag kayo matakot. Ako sa totoo lang, no? It's, it's about, it's about risk anyway. So might as well risk what you can risk, ba? Uh, and bata pa naman tayo, di ba? Mga millennials, bata pa naman tayo. Kain natin mag-risk nito. So, okay. So, okay. Next. Uh, page not found daw. Sabi ni Sohail, the link is wrong. Pati niya, ano yung engineer mo? Ito, Bizridge. Ayan, no? Eh? Yeah, yeah exactly. tama. Can you try again, so Hale, if the link is right? Dito sa Kumu, tama ba yung link na shinare namin? Kahit i-check na lang ha. Tapos sabihin nyo lang sa akin if mali also. Okay, so let's talk about so Hale's um, comment. He said, I have been working, ah, tama naman. I have been working on Upwork. Guys, familiar ba kayo sa Upwork? So Upwork is a freelancing platform where you get 
to see clients. So thank you, user five seven two five three one for joining us. And yan na. Ano mo na username mo, user five seven two five three one. Yeah. So for sabi ni Soli, so Hale, um, he's been working up in Upwork, but I wasn't in the Philippines. I recently migrated here. I am naturalized Filipino now. I want to register myself as a taxpayer, but don't know where to start. I love the idea of Taxumo. It seems like it makes things simple and can focus on my work. Ah, ito paling kanina. Can you help me a little bit? Okay, he, here's his other um, comment. How much tax do I pay as a registered freelancer as per yearly income? So I think uh, hi, bro. Over. So I think this is one question that we also ask, no, as a freelancer or as a as a sole proprietor. Um, we ask, parang, uh, how much ba talaga? Sabi nila parang na deduct us from the from the income, de ba? Sayang naman expense ko to parang sana income na pero kailangan ko pa magbayad ng tax. Ganon yung mindset ng karamihan sa atin, de ba? When we when we think about taxes, so. Um, what do you think, EJ? Ano ba yung usual tax? Siguro, before we delve into that mindset, no, let's talk about ano ba yung taxes? Ano yung types of taxes that we need to pay? Hey, R, thank you for joining us. All right, sige. Hi, so Car and Soy. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so the types of taxes you need to pay, normally when you think about taxes, especially if you're coming from employment, Ang iniisip mo is it's just one type of tax, meaning it's the annual 2316. We associate it with that, no? If you have your own business, you're filing at least quarterly, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are people who are registered and in advice and sila na mag-file lang yearly, mali yung advice na yun. I can, equivocal, I, I can unequivocally say na mali yung advice na yun, okay? So the right advice is you have to file as per the frequency na sinabi ng na, na required by the BIR, which is at least quarterly, no? For for most of the forms we'll comply with. Okay, so what is income tax? Okay. Um, income tax is basically um, a tax on your income. So, <laughs> ang ibig sabihin nun is yung eh, income mo minus your expenses, you'll arrive at your taxable income. And then I think you've seen that table before of magkano dapat yung bayaran mo based on a certain amount of income. Yon, that taxable income is what you check versus that table. Okay, that's yes. called the graduated income tax table. With train, the government introduced an option called the 8% flat income tax rate. Okay, what that means is that, di ba sabi ko, income minus expenses equals taxable income. So, yun yung check mo sa table. Yung 8%, you just get your income. Untog ka, sorry. You just get your income. Tapos, if you are earning solely from your business, meaning you're not employed, you just get your income and then 8% of that, yung babayaran mong, uh, sorry, you deduct 250000 Yes, kasi may exemption. Yes, may exemption tayo. And that remaining amount is, uh, you multiply it uh, by 8%. Okay? Yes. And that 8%, yun yung income tax payable mo. Alright? So, um, so that's, that's income tax. There's also another um, option when it comes to income tax called OSD. Okay, so what is OSD? OSD is optional standard deduction. What it means is, the main sinabi ko kanina, income minus expenses. With OSD, you're basically saying that my expenses are always 40% of my income. Mm -hmm. So it's a given value already. The remainder or the, the difference basically of your income minus 40% of that, essentially 60% of your income, you, ch you check that on the table, and kung magkano yung payable mo, then that's what you pay. Yes. All right? If you have a choice between OSD and 8%, 8% is always cheaper. Okay? Um, okay, so that's income tax. No, So that's the what we're familiar with. You file this quarterly. Okay? okay. So don't forget income that. Income tax, guys. Yes. Uh, more Normally, people say annual ITR. So once lang yan. Hindi. IQ. Ang ITR is quarterly. So Damn. you have a Q1. A Q2, a Q3, and then an annual. Yes. Okay, so those are the four forms. That's income tax. So yung laging yung sinasabi na annual ITR, yun yung pangsara ng taon. Yung deadline nun is April 15. Diba? Lagi tayong nagsasabi na April 15, uh, tax na naman, yun yung annual ITR. Kasi that's what you file during that deadline. 
Yes. Okay. So, thank you, Francis. Thank you for joining. Yes. So, what if merong, normally some of us, you know, especially if you have local clients, binibigyan ka nila ng certificate of tax withheld or a 2307. That amount is, most of the time, deducted from your income tax. Okay. okay. So, that's the safe That's the safe way of handling it. Basically, di ba na sinabi ko, income minus expense, lalabas yung amount, and then kukunin ko sa tax table magkano yung kailangan kong bayaran. Yung kailangan kong bayaran, ba minus ko, Yung, two, three, yung win and hold, yung yes. mga 2307. Okay? okay. Tapos may matitira ko. Minsan, mas negative yung matitira. Which means, wala kang babayaran. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, a lot of people think na kapag meron kang 2307 or your client withheld taxes for you, tapos ka na, that is wrong. Okay? Correct. You still have to file your own taxes. Yeah. So, marami ating nananood sa atin ng mga Sun Life, yung mga ganyan, Sun Life, uh, Manu Life, True Life, yung mga insurance agents, uh, brokers, di ba normally, they issue you a 2307 form. So, that form, it doesn't... Again, just to reiterate what EJ said, it doesn't mean that you've already filed your taxes. It just says that si client nyo or yung company na yon has withheld or parang sila na nag-abono ng a portion of your taxes. So the, the rest, you should still pay your taxes for that. Okay? All right. Okay. So that's income tax. Okay? It's, there's a... I think probably there's more to discuss about it, but I think that's the gist yes. of it, no? So yes, may isa tayong tanong sa kumu right now. Sabi, how about VAT? Ano ba naman yung ano naman tong VAT na to? Okay, yes, madalas yan marinig. VAT, non-VAT, percentage tax. Okay. All right. So aside from income tax, you also have a tax on your business transactions. Okay, that is VAT. Essentially, what it means is that the government has a cut or the government nagpapatong sila ng tax on the transaction kasi they exist therefore they allow that facilitation to happen, to happen. you know they facilitated the transaction in a way of speaking so nagpapatong sila ng VAT the 12% VAT no um for most freelancers what you will be given what what will be assigned to you is not VAT what will be assigned to you is called percentage tax yes. okay so, so you will be non VAT uh -oh. All right. What does that mean? Um, that means there's a iba iba depending on your industry. Pero if you're a freelancer, most like ninety nine percent your your ATC right? will be meaning your alphanumeric tax code. Oh, ATC. <laughs> Ulitin natin. Ano yung ATC? Alpha alphanumeric tax, tax code. code. Sorry. Okay. So the tax code assigned to your like nature of business is three percent. No, is will map to a three percent rate. Meaning your gross income. Na kanina sinasabi ko you pay 3% of that as percentage tax. Uh -oh. Okay? So, basically, kunwari, may client ako, binayaran niya ako ng 10,000 pesos. Yung gross income mo is the 10,000 pesos. So, 3% of the 10,000 is your percentage tax. Mm -hmm. okay. 300. Alright, so that is percentage tax. It's pretty straightforward. It's always just income. Wala kang binabawas na expense. You file it before you had to file it monthly. So, it's mm -hmm. madugo siya. Uh, yeah. But it's still not that hard. Pero, um, now it's filed quarterly. Yeah, hard yun na. Actually, it is. No? Iniyak ka ni Ginger yung dati. Iniyak ko yung dati. Kasi ang dami mong kailangan ibang gano. Yes. Pero, quarterly na siya ngayon. You know, which is which means it's less frequent. Um, but, you know, it takes it still takes a chunk of time. Especially if you have to go to the bank to pay and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. no? So, with Taksumo, it's super fast. No? So, so those are the first things that we did because those are the things that we know a lot of you guys will need to use. No? So that's percentage taxes. No? Okay, so when do you become percentage tax and when do you become VAT? There's yes. a threshold. Okay? If you're earning, if your revenue, your gross revenue is above 3 million pesos for the year, then you are VAT. Okay? Yes. Meaning, tatanong normally yan sa'yo eh, nung, nung officer of the day, RDO, when you register, magkano ang projected revenue mo? Tapos ikaw, feeling mo sobrang taas, sabi mo, okay, feeling ko 5 million, kasi magaling ako eh. Iva VAT ka kapag ganun, okay? Malaki ang VAT kasi 12% siya. Yes. Okay. So, pero, so normally, you know, when you tell them, well, freelancer ako from home, so I think percentage tax yon. Sabihin nyo na yon para alam nila, okay, percentage tax. 3% lang yun. Yes. 
Okay? So be sure, no? Kasi sometimes, nilalagay na lang ng BIR officer automatic na VAT ka. Mm-hmm. So it's really good to know, like simple things like this, na pag nag-register kayo, always tell them na, tika, hindi pa ako kumikita ng 3 million. Um, ilagay nyo muna ako sa non-VAT. As a non-VAT entity, magbabayad muna po ako ng percentage tax. And tip lang, sometimes it also help it also helps na nagbibigay ka ng mga terms like that pag kinakausap mo yung government. Para at least alam din nila na, ka, alam ko yung sinasabi ko. So, ganon. So, it's good to... 3% tax. 3% yes. VAT. Wag ganun na. Wala ganun. ganun. 3% percentage tax. Mm-hmm. So, there. Thank you, Jay. Uh, right. It's good naman nat- nat- natututo kayo with the simple things that we're sharing with you. Don't worry. We'll have more live sessions like this. Explaining mga terms, yung mga hindi natin usually naintindihan uh, when it comes to starting a business or sustaining a business. Yan. Mm-hmm. So, at least today, nalaman na natin anong mga ibig sabihin ng APC, VAT versus percentage, income tax, uh, GRT, um, di ba? Alam niyo na yung mga, yung language na ganyan, no? So, what else pa? Ano pa bang mga questions din yung guys? So, tinitignan ko dito kung may mga questions pa. Baka dito sa Kumu, baka may mga questions. Ay, hindi ko makikita pala dito. May questions dito kanina. Ayan. O, oh, yun yun eh. Nabasa ko na siya. So there, so, um, ay wait, ay, hindi. Hindi, ay, yun na yun. So, all you need to do is, like, um, again, this session is brought to you by PayPal Philippines. Thank you, PayPal. Because, okay, ang, ang advocacy really ng PayPal is really helping, and obviously, my own advocacy na is helping freelancers and business owners start their businesses right and um, do it right, no, lahat. So, PayPal is basically a platform wherein they, you can receive payment from abroad. Kung my clients kay abroad, all you need to do is uh, open a PayPal account, link it to a bank, and um, yun. So, pwede na i-transfer yun sa inyong bank account dito sa Philippines. So, normally card-based ang bank account dapat. So, dapat yung mga may ATM, na Visa, yung mga ganun, MasterCard. If you have a credit card, you can also link it to to PayPal. And I think sabi kanina ni Fitz, parang sa Kumu daw, I in this other platform where I'm live streaming now, yung payouts sa for the contests, may PayPal din, ganun. So, it's good to have a PayPal account as well. Ayun, so, what else are the questions? Uh, inisip ko yung normally natatanong sa atin ng mga customers natin eh. Uh, okay, if you have like, Let's say, hindi kayo sure of meron kayong registration with the BIR, you just call them. You can ask your RDO if meron kayong COR, previous COR, that was enrolled. Kasi marami dyan nakakalimot na, ay, nag-open pala ako ng business two years ago, nakalimutan ko i-close. So, better to check already. Maganda na ma-stop ninyo or parang you start paying already because hindi kayo nag incur ng penalties and charges. So, whenever you start paying, hanggang dun lang yung penalties. Penalties. So, if papag, papagliban nyo, tama ba? Papagpaliban? Pagpapaliban nyo pa yan, tatagal pa yung time na nag incur kayo ng penalties. So, if I were you, if hindi kayo sure, ask, oo, nagpapatong-patong na yun eh. So, ask your RDO already. And for you to start a Taksumo account, all you need to do is copy the details in your certificate of registration once you've registered. And then just input your income and expense. Our system will automatically compute already for your tax uh, for your tax juice. And then you can pay via PayPal, via um, offline banking, over-the-counter banking, uh, via online banking, 7-11, via 7-Eleven, sa Guadalupe, blah, blah, blah. SM so, Department Store. Marami, maraming pwede. Abot nyo sa amin, sa office. <laughs> In taho. <laughs> Oy, taho naman dyan. Dami namin sinabi. Kasi dito sa Kumob, nagbibigay sila ng taho. Yan. Mm. So, yes, thank you also for joining us, Sohail. I think, um, siguro for the last thing na lang, no, we have this new product called Taxumo Premium. If wala talaga kayo maintindihan sa pinagsasabi namin ngayon, <laughs> meron talaga parang, ay, ayoko marinig yan, yung taxation, or ayoko yan intindihin. We have a product called Taxumo Premium where you just outsource everything to us. When I say outsource, 
ipadala nyo lang ang picture ng inyong mga resibo sa amin at kami na po ang gagawa. At may dashboard kayo where you see your tax dues. We'll just call you and say, say hello sir, hello ma'am. Nandiyan na po sa dashboard ninyo, pakibayaran na po. So, ganun siya. Ka, What? Ang dali na ganun. <laughs> ganun ka-efficient. Gano kami ka-efficient sa taksumo. Another thing, pag gusto nyo ulit, ulitin to, yung ating sharing of knowledge, meron kaming, ano yun? <laughs> meron kami. Uh, meron kaming workshop, sorry. Meron kaming workshop on Saturday. Saturday ba yun? Next Friday. Sorry, Friday. January 18 at Blends Coffee Shop. Blends Coffee. Blends Coffee in Circuit Makati. Again, meron kaming workshop on January 18, Blends Coffee in Makati. So all you need to do is drop by and we will, sagot na namin ang coffee. Kami na bahala sa coffee. Makikinig lang kayo at magtatanong ng questions. Yon. So you can look at You can find Taksumo, Taksumo uh, Facebook page, and then you can look for the event and you can register there. So for those of you who still have questions, no, because um, there are a lot of things that we need to talk about taxation, business registration. If you have unique questions that you'd like to ask, follow me on Mommy Ginger here at Facebook. And then you can send me your PM me your questions. At Kumu naman, you can follow me. Please do follow me. Um, I can answer all of your business-related questions, your taxation-related questions, marketing-related questions, lahat na po, operations-related questions. Just PM me, add me, follow me. Ayan, that's it for today. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you also sa aking co-teacher today, si EJ Arboleda, CEO of Taksumo. That's it. Thank you guys for joining us. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>